I'd like to begin with you. I'd like to uh, give you the first opportunity to, to tell us and to share your, your insights about, let, let's say, what is the logic of, of each social media uh, that you choose in your, in your field guide? Tell us something about this adventure. Sure. So this is a project that um, I conducted along with uh, a brilliant researcher, uh, Chan Rajenda Nicolucci. We were both visiting scholars at uh, the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University this past year. And my work in general is around this question of how social media and social networks could be made more healthy, more civic, less toxic for the world. And one of the things that I had observed was that when we talk about social networks, we pretty much only talk about Facebook. Um, and the truth is there's an enormous diversity of ways people interact online. And so Chand and I decided that we would try to map the space of social media by talking about different ways social networks can work. They're not always about staying in touch with your families and friends. Sometimes they're about groups of people answering questions. Sometimes they're about um, having currencies and trying to get paid for making comments. Sometimes they are networks that have an explicit civic or public goal towards them. And what we realized in the course of doing this was that we were not making a map, which was the metaphor that we'd started with. We were making much more of a field guide. And talking with Fiametta, we sort of realized that the, the, the illustration of what we wanted to do were the sorts of guides that you pick up when you're going on a walk to look at birds or to look at wild animals. We wanted to help people identify in the wild, the sorts of social networks that they were seeing. So the actual shape of the project intellectually built on the visual metaphor. And Fiametta helped us make that shift over to guidebook. But then once we sort of realized that we were going to build a guidebook, we had a whole bunch of other aesthetic decisions to make. One was that we didn't want to be digital. We didn't want to be photo real this is very much the aesthetic that you get all the time in the digital world. Everything tries to be slick and look like it comes off a screen. We wanted to look backwards. We wanted to look towards the 19th century. We wanted to look at engravings. Um, he's become a very problematic figure in the US, but we wanted to think about Audubon. We wanted to think about this sort of history of nature illustration. And then the other thing we wanted to be very, very clear was that we didn't want to take things too seriously. Uh, and, and that was a place where we sort of challenged each other to have as much fun and be as outrageous as we possibly could be, to be very clear that these birds that Fiametta ended up depicting were not literally true, but they were figuratively true. Um, and so at a certain point, this was no longer just about illustrating a pre-written set of case studies, it was really a way in which the decisions that we made collectively about how to visualize and how to illustrate actually ended up steering the entire project. Once you start thinking of things in terms of a field guide, where you're gonna see a specific instance of a general category, you think of it very, very differently as a, as a writer and a researcher. And so for me, this experience of illustrating as a critical part of the project, something I've never had the opportunity to do before as a social scientist, actually utterly transformed uh, the entire project and, and in an extremely positive way. This is very, very interesting. And it's so lovely to hear, I uh, to hear the word, the adjective outrageous. Uh, to be, I think, to have the most amazing, outrageous time possible. What a great environment to be, to be, to be working in. And, and today, I mean, as you say, you, you created this Pigeons in the Park, uh, the Field Guide, uh, uh, all these incredible images. Um, where, where, what, what will be the next projects that you have uh, on your plate? <laughs> <laughs> just, well, just in a word. Sure. Uh, <laughs> 
we're building next. We were we were really mapping at this point and describing. Now Chand and I are actually building networks very much around things like civic logic. Mm-hmm. I don't know that illustration will be as central there, but I suspect that you know on our design board for small town, which is the network that we're building around civic logic, this illustration here will probably occupy a central place because this question of how we construct public spaces that people can come together in small constructed groups, that's very much the, the conceptual image that we want to be working to. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ethan.